down and turn to the Gospel of John, chapter 15. We're going to read the first 16 verses of this chapter today. The title of our message today and the subject we're going to be looking at is Abiding, Abiding in Christ. John, chapter 15, and the first 16 verses. Jesus is speaking here, and he says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purchaseth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another, as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Thank you. Thank you. You may be seated. You probably notice as we were reading that portion of scripture that uh, there's a word that's used repeatedly there. And Jesus is the preacher on that occasion. But the word that keeps being repeated here is the word abide. Abide. It means to continue, to dwell, or to remain. If we think of salvation as coming to the king for pardon, abiding would mean remaining with the king for blessing sitting with him always abiding with Christ brings to mind that portion of scripture in the life and ministry of Jesus Christ when, G when Mary got into trouble with her sister Martha and on that occasion Martha was very upset because she was having to do so much work and preparing a meal. Now, of course, the Lord, at that time, he had a group of people following him, and he was teaching, and there was a group of people there listening, and so it fell upon uh, Mary and Martha to provide the hospitality for the day. However, Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet and listening to him as he was teaching. Uh, she remained there. To the extent that her sister got upset with her and came to Jesus, interrupted him in his teaching, and complained about her sister and the way her sister was acting, leaving her to do all the work. And the Lord Jesus Christ has, on so many occasions, surprised everybody. He didn't take Martha's part. He took the side of Mary. And he told Martha, and he rebuked her, he said, Mary has chosen that good part. And what was the difference, the main difference, between what Martha was doing 
and what Mary was doing. Well, Mary refused to leave the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Even if it meant she was being in a hospital for the group that was gathered there that day, even if it meant that she wasn't going to get anything to eat for herself, as a matter of fact, as far as Mary was concerned, there was only one person in the house that day. Amen. There was only one person that she wanted to be involved with that day. And the interesting thing that follows this as well is, while Mary was abiding at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ, she was doing just that. She wasn't interrupting him as he was speaking. She was, wasn't trying to have a part in the service. She was sitting there. She was remaining there. She was just enjoying the moment. That's one thing we could say. One way of interpreting this command. The command is from the Lord Jesus Christ here in John chapter 15. Repeated this number of times that we, the main, the main thrust of our lives as God's people today is to abide in the Lord Jesus Christ. That means that he is to be in our minds, our hearts, our activities. He is to be the focus of our attention at all times. We are supposed to be, as his people, if we accept his advice, we're supposed to be abiding with him and in him and for him. That means that uh, uh, we get, he gets our undivided attention and that we readily give it to him. And so no matter what we're doing in our lives, we are supposed to be people that are abiding in the Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes you hear about Christians who are trying to get victory over a particular sin in their life. Here is a solution. Abide in Christ. Abide in Christ. If you're abiding in Christ, you're not going to do anything wrong. You're not going to do anything sinful, and you're not even going to be in a position where Satan can get at you, to tempt you, and to lead you astray. Abiding in Christ. In this passage of Scripture, uh, we have the importance of this word emphasized for us. Um, if we want to really be the kind of people that we ought to be, Christians like Christ, then we need to be people that are abiding in Christ. We need to be people that are willing to sit at his feet to hear his word, to give him his, our undivided attention, and to let nothing of this world interfere with it. We need to be people that are looking to hear his word from his lips. We need to be people that want to see his face as he speaks to us. We need to be people that give him our undivided attention, our unconditional love, and our continual presence. No interruptions, nothing to dissuade us or to take us away from his presence. When you think about the uh, churches in the world today, the places of worship, and you see the way people in their attendance, so many times there's so, so many small reasons for missing yes. the church services. Uh, how much does it take to get God's people today to find something else to do when the Lord wants to meet with them in his house? Amen. This is his house. It belongs to him. And this is where he dwells. And this is where his ministry is being performed. Hallelujah. In his church. In this world. And if we want communication with him. If we want to know what we're doing wrong. 
if we want to know how to correct it, if we want to know what he wants us to do, if we want to discern his will, if we want to follow his leading, if we want to know whether we have his approval or not, the things that we're doing, if we want any of these things and a host of other things, then we're going to have to pay attention to him. Amen. This is what abiding is all about. Uh, there are seven, seven things that are listed in this passage of Scripture that we read this morning that have to do with the subject of abiding. In other words, the Lord Jesus Christ, He gives the command, abide in me, and if we, uh, then He also not only gives that command, but He indicates a result that will follow if we will obey that command to abide in him. So there are seven results that will be blessings in our lives if we will but do this one thing, and that is to abide in him. Abide in him. And uh, the first eight verses here, the Lord Jesus Christ talks about fruit bearing. Fruit bearing. If we're going to bear fruit in this life for the Lord Jesus Christ, he's talking about spiritual fruit here. Uh, then we need to be people who abide in him. There are three degrees of fruit bearing which are mentioned here. And uh, I hope you remember that in biblical interpretation, especially in the Greek language of the New Testament, the most important thing that's being spoken of always comes first. Remember we told you that, uh, uh, you know, in, our, in the English language, you always have the subject, uh, the verb, and the predicate in almost every sentence. And this is a regulation. This is the way you write, this is the way you speak, and this is the way we communicate in the English language. Not so in the days of the Lord Jesus Christ. The New Testament was written in the Greek language, and it, the, uh, the, the, the order of the words and of the sentences, of the chapters, and even of whole books, is determined by what is most important in the mind and the heart of God. And so uh, we were taught as we were studying the, the New Testament in Bible college that we're to pay close attention uh, in the manuscripts to what comes first. If the most important word in a sentence in the Greek language was the verb, that's what they started out with. This wouldn't make too much sense to us in the English language today, or many other languages, but it made sense to them because they wanted that to be the first thing that we would hear coming from their mouth. And that we would understand that whatever I'm going to say to you, this is the most important part of my sentence, or paragraph, or chapter, or the whole letter. So this is where we develop the law of first mention. It's one of the rules for Bible interpretation. The first mention of anything in the Bible, or in a book of the Bible, or in a chapter of the Bible, or a verse of the Bible, that rule applies. That's the most important thing there. And so the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, he is speaking here, and uh, he's speaking on the subject of abiding in him. Abiding in him. And so that is the important message of this chapter. And uh, he mentions here uh, in, uh, uh, in verses 1 through 8 that we are to abide in him when it comes to the subject of fruit bearing. Now, whatever that fruit is, is not mentioned here. It's mentioned in other places. But, if we're going to bear fruit for him, 
then uh, uh, he, this is the, should be an important thing in our minds and our heart. Uh, so, uh, how do we bear fruit for the Lord Jesus Christ? This takes first place of seven in this sermon that Jesus preaches. Mary is the only one who heard the sermon, possibly. She was sitting at his feet. But uh, uh, he mentions here, as he speaks to her and uh, the few others that were there, uh, about uh, uh, fruit bearing, he mentions that there are three degrees of fruitfulness. In verse uh, 2, he talks about more fruit. In verse 5, he talks about much fruit. And then in verse 8, he talks about our discipleship being proved by our fruit that we have for him. So fruit is the subject. And he tells us that this important subject has three degrees of a blessing or success. Fruit. So he wants us as his people to bring forth fruit. He's speaking spiritually now. He wants spiritual fruit from us. In order for us to bear spiritual fruit, uh, we have to be people who abide in him. We read a lot of times, and we hear a lot of times, and there are a lot of books written about uh, people who want to become soul winners. And there are journals, and there are outlines, and there are different ways in which uh, we're encouraged not only to be soul winners, but to be better at soul winning. And so some of them talk about the gift of gab. Some of them talk about uh, using this verse, or this passage of scripture, or this... Uh, this topic or this subject or using this illustration or using tracts. Uh, there's a lot of different things there. But the Lord Jesus Christ says, if you want to bear fruit, and we are supposed to bear fruit, we must abide in Him. And since He lists this as the first of seven things and reasons why we should abide in Him, we should give significance to it and great importance to it. So, uh, in order to bear fruit, whether we're talking about just fruit, more fruit, or much fruit, as is found in verses 2, 5, and 8, we need to make sure that we abide in Him. Abiding in Him. What does it mean to abide in the Lord Jesus Christ. That means that he should have, as Mary did, sitting at his feet that day, he should have our full and undivided attention, regardless of whatever else is going on in our lives. We should begin the day with him. We should end the day with him. We should spend the day thinking of him. That's abiding in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It should always be in the tip of our tongues. Lord, what would thou have me to do? As we live each day of our lives. We should be people of prayer. We should be people of his word. Reading his word. This is abiding in the Lord Jesus Christ. We should speak on his behalf to others around us. This is abiding in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so he tells us, if we want to have fruit, more fruit, and much fruit, it's imperative, according to these first eight verses, that we abide in him. So that means that we can't just grab a track, and uh, off a track rack, and, and get hand to somebody at our door and stop by. Or, no, we, if it's going to be effective, we need to already have started that day with the Lord. Yes. And we should be thinking of that day as, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? We should be people each day who are sitting at his feet. 
We should be people like Mary that are looking at his face constantly. We should know always uh, what, how he feels about us. How's he looking at us? I always knew when my mother was upset with me. I could tell just by the way she looked at me. She was never, she was a quiet, quiet person. And uh, she would speak, but you had to listen to hear what she had to say. But boy, you better listen to what my mother had to say. Because if we didn't listen to my mother, my father, he was much more demonstrative. <laughs> and uh, he could get the point across if we didn't get it from mom to begin with. We need, uh, I could, I could, uh, there, my mother could slay me just by looking at me. She could make me shrivel up. If I did something wrong and I got caught, or if one of my brothers or sisters tattled on me, and they did that a lot. But uh, if that happened, and, and then she'd turn her and look at me, and not say anything, just look at me. Oh, I remember that even all these many years later. She's been 26 years in heaven already, but I can still remember. I still think about the way she would look at me. Some of the things that I go about in this life doing, I think, hmm, what would mom think about this? We need to be thinking all the time, what does the Lord think about us? And we should be people that can see his face spiritually. See his countenance. See his love. See his concern. See his authority. We should be looking at him that way if we're going to bear fruit. The second thing we find uh, that is presented to us here in this passage of scripture is in verse 7. And that is answered prayer. Do you ever wonder in your life why when you pray for something that the prayer isn't answered by the Lord? Well, we need to ask ourselves, when we pray, are we abiding in Him? Or is He just like Santa Claus, a Christmas list of things that we want? We need to abide in Him. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. This is how prayers get answered. In the believer's mind, in the believer's heart, he needs to be a person who is abiding in the Lord Jesus Christ. And what a promise is attached to this. If we will abide in the Lord Jesus Christ, we will ask what we desire, and it will be done for us. You might be saying now, Pastor, are you saying that if I ask for something, is just because I want it that the Lord's going to give it to me anyway? Yes, I am saying that today. If, when we ask, we are abiding Amen. in Him. We're looking at His face as Mary did. We're doting on our Savior. That's what Jesus is saying. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. So if we're looking at the face of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we ask for something, if we're really looking at him like we ought to be, we're not going to ask for something amiss. We're not going to ask for something that's wrong. We're already going to know what the parameters are, and how we should pray, and how we should make re requests unto him. So, Answered prayer. Answered prayer. That's something that we can count on in our lives, but only if we are abiding in Him. And when we are abiding in Him, we won't ask anything that's contrary to His will, or anything that's contrary to His desires, anything that's contrary to His purposes, or anything that's contrary to to his feelings. If we are beholding his face as Mary was on this occasion, doting upon him, gazing upon him with complete love and devotion and respect, if that's the way we are when we are praying, if we're abiding in him in that manner and fashion, we're not going to ask for things that he has to say no to. 
We're going to be asking for things that he can say yes to. And so he makes his promise then. If you abide in me, whatever you ask, it shall be given to you. Hmm. What if I ask for a million dollars? Hmm. If you're looking at him and you know that there's a need for somebody, a missionary somewhere, an evangelist somewhere, somebody that needs a million dollars, we can look, we can see it, we can see his approval. If, we're, uh, if we are watching his face, we know whether he's happy, we know whether he's content, we know whether he's in agreement, but we have to be looking to him, abiding in him. In, chapter, in verse 9 of this chapter, a third thing he talks about is that if we abide in him, we're going to know that we're loved. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If we are abiding in Lord Jesus Christ, then we're going to be assured that he loves us. Um, this is one of the things that pastors can use when they're dealing with people, Christians that are having problems in their lives. To try and see, are they abiding in Christ? If they're, if they're doubting God's love, here's the, here's the root cause. This is where we need to go in counseling with them. Are you abiding with him? Or do you spend each day sitting at his feet and adoring him? If you want to, if you really want to have um, answered prayer, then you need to be looking upon him. If you really want, are looking upon him, then you're going to realize his great love for you. You're going to feel loved. You're going to be assured, assured of the love. If there are Christians that doubt God's love, it's because they're not abiding in him. Abiding in him. He has our attention. Every day, every hour, every minute. Wherever we are, whatever else we're doing, we, we have Him in our minds, in our hearts. He has our attention. In verse 10, He talks about another thing that we will, will be ours if we will abide in Him, and that is uh, obedience. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in His love. Abiding in Christ means that we'll be able to keep the commandments that the Lord has given to us. How many times have I heard Christians talk about the Old Testament commandments in the Pentateuch because they were given to Moses on, on the Mount, Mount Sinai. Uh, my goodness, if you go through and you read those commandments, uh, this always happens to me. I read through my Bible and I read through all those commandments and uh, you know I, the thought always crossed my mind how how can I possibly do all these things without fail how can I remember all these things let alone do all these things this is how we keep his commandments by abiding in him Amen. abiding in him uh, we, we think about uh, many times in my life, even since my parents have passed away, when I'm faced with a decision to make, uh, in my mind I think back, you know, what would, what would they have said on this occasion? What would my dad have said? What would my mother have said to me uh, that I should do uh, in this particular situation? Well, this passage of scripture, Jesus is telling us, Jesus is telling Mary, and now it's written down so you and I can see it as well, that uh, if, if uh, we want to uh, keep his commandments, then we can do it by abiding in him. And we can't keep his commandments unless we are abiding in him. It's impossible. It can't happen. This is the way. This is the way he has chosen for us. All right? And then we see in verse 11, there is fullness of joy. How many of you that are listening today would raise your hand and say, yeah, 
Yeah, I'd like to be happy. Put my name on the list. I volunteer. I volunteer to be happy today. Yeah, uh, you know, let this be a good, I want this to be a good day. I want this to be a happy day. I want this to be a joyful day. I, I want th good things to happen for me today. And uh, uh, is that wrong? The world is filled with people that want joy in their lives. They want happiness. They want contentment. How many of them are getting it? How much of the joy is disappearing mm -hmm. from an ordinary life? Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't too long ago that one of the favorite things uh, for our son, Jeff, who's disabled, one of the favorite things for him to do was to take him shopping. No. <laughs> and it wasn't that, you know, he wanted to buy a whole lot of things. Uh, we'd take him shopping. He really didn't know what he wanted. <laughs> <laughs> and we always tried to pick out something for him, something that he could, he could take home and play with. Uh, but uh, um, that was, a, he, he got a lot of joy out of that. He enjoyed uh, the being where other people were. He enjoyed uh, the lights. He enjoyed the colors, the advertisements. He, he enjoyed the excitement. He enjoyed looking at all the things on the shelves. He enjoyed going up to the register and, uh, and getting it, and he always insisted, uh, you know, he, a lot of cashiers got in trouble with our son Jeff, <laughs> because uh, they, they would take something off his tray and ring it up, and then they would try and put it in a bag or a basket or something. No, 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 no. Uh, had, to go, had to go back to him, you know. He wasn't going to be happy unless he carried that out of the store in his clutches. But uh, the way the economy is going right now, uh, we have noticed, and, and, and Jeff has noticed that as well, it's no longer an enjoyable thing to go shopping, is it? There's a lot of things in this life that we have to do, and it would be really wonderful if we could do it with joy. Here's the solution. Here's the key. Here's the key. In verse 11. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. What was that? Abide in me. Abide in me. All right, now, uh, in verse 15, then, we see something else is given to us here um, that it would be a great blessing, but in order to have it, we have to abide in him. And that is the knowledge of his will. The knowledge of his will. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you want to know what God's will for your life is in any area, then you need to spend time with him. You need to abide in him. I know my wife's favorite color. Do you know how I know my wife's favorite color? Because I've been shopping with her. <laughs> and I know what she picks out, what colors she <laughs> picks out when, when we go shopping. And, uh, and, and so because I wouldn't have known that if I had been with her and paying attention. This is one of the things that you husbands have to learn early in the marriage, if you're going to survive it. <laughs> You've got to pay attention to your wife. You've got to pay attention to your wife. Uh, and uh, it's, it's not a wasted effort either. You can have peace in the home, and, uh, and uh, this comes about, you know what her wishes are. Uh, I made a lot of mistakes early in our marriage with the gifts that I would get for birthdays for my wife and anniversaries and things like so. And I'm still not, haven't got it perfected yet. But I have made some progress. Now I ask her, ahead of time, what would you like? You know? And uh, if she doesn't come out and tell me, oh, I'll be happy with anything, 
she's not going to be happy with anything. <laughs> no, but it helps if I pay attention to her. Mm -hmm. It helps if I watch her countenance as she goes through her life. It helps if I notice what her favorite colors are. It helps, you know, uh, and, and so it's become, uh, our lives have become better as years have gone by. Part of that is because I've learned to pay attention to her. And uh, uh, this is what the Lord wants from us. He wants us to abide in Him. And uh, the last thing that we can see from this passage of Scripture, and we by no means exhausted this wonderful portion of Scripture in John chapter 15, when Jesus is talking to one person. Wouldn't you feel favored if the Lord just spoke to you? He does. But we're not paying attention many times. We are speaking to one person. And we come down to the to the, the end of this list of these seven things. And uh, the, the last thing that the Lord promises Mary, Martha didn't get any of these promises. She got burned at the stove, <laughs> cooking things. Uh, but the last thing that Jesus mentions to Mary here, that if she will abide in him, you would get permanent results. Look at verse 16. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. Your fruit should remain. Many times uh, when we buy fruit at the store, we have to be very careful to eat it within a certain period of time, right? Because mm -hmm. it's not going to last. It's, it's, it's soon going to go rotten. It's going to go stale. But not so. If we abide in Jesus Christ, Amen. whatever we do for Him mm -hmm. is going to be forever. Amen. Our fruit Hallelujah. is going to remain. Hallelujah. Now what do we have to do then to get these seven things in our lives as Christians? All we need to do to have these seven blessings is to abide in Him. Yes. Be thinking about Him all day, every day. Yes. Be thinking about His likes, His dislikes. Be thinking about His feelings. Be thinking about our love for Him and His love for us. Mm -hmm. We need to dote upon the Lord Jesus. Yes. That's basically what it means here yes. to abide in Christ. To dote upon Him. To give Him the proper amount of attention that he deserves in our lives. Now, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, none of this is going to work. Mm -hmm. Because abiding in Christ means that you have to come to know Christ for yourself. So I'd like to close by asking you the question then today. Have you had a time in your life when you repented of your sins and accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. If you've never done that, it doesn't do you any good to try and fix your attention upon Him. For it's not going to be returned upon you. But if you will accept Christ as your Savior and receive from Him the forgiveness of your sins, you will become part of His family. You will become part of his heart. You will become a major part of his life and his existence. If you look at creation around us, and a lot of people in the world today are studying the creation as never before. A lot of people are looking at the astronomical signs to see what their life is going to be like or how to improve their life, or to get happiness in their life, let me just tell you this, you're looking in the wrong place. Amen. You need to accept Christ as your Savior. You need to come into a relationship with Him, and then and only then can you abide in Him. Amen. And you can dote upon Him, 
and he will dote upon you. Amen. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them. I know them. The Lord Jesus Christ called himself the Good Shepherd while he was here on earth. And his final prayer to the Father before his crucifixion and ascension back to heaven, he said to the Father, I have lost none of them. None of them. If you will accept Christ as your Savior today, you will become a sheep of his pasture. He will become your shepherd, hmm. your heavenly shepherd. Wow. And you will never, ever get lost again. Amen. He will be there for you in every situation. That's good enough reason, I think, that we should accept him as our Savior. Yes. And it also gives us the right and the ability to abide with him always. Never alone, that song sings. Remember it? Yes. No, no, no. never alone. We oh. have Jesus Christ. Wherever we are, whatever it is, whatever the problem, he is there for us and with us. Yes, he is. And we invite you to become part of his family today. Let's bow our heads in closing this morning. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that you're willing to be a father to us. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're willing to be our Savior, our Shepherd, our Guardian, our Guide, our Stay, our Helper. We thank you so much that all we need is to abide in you. And we can have everything that we want in this life and in the life yet to come. We thank you for these incredible blessings that you offer us here in this wonderful passage of Scripture. We pray that you bring it home to the hearts of the people listening this morning. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Amen.